Okay, let's go ahead and start with a basic template and then we can save it as a template so that every time that we come in to start a new project, we can start up on something that makes sense to us. First thing I'm going to do is go ahead and delete this MIDI track here. Uh, going to go ahead and take out the help module. I do like having my VST effects and things of that nature over here as well as my media library but I'm gonna go ahead and collapse it so that it's not always visible over here. I'm gonna go ahead and collapse the track channel here, channel strip. And then I'm gonna start here with just uh, kind of this like basic setup here. Let's go ahead and add three more tracks. Let's make sure that they're all routed to the master. Okay. Now if I click and drag over all of these and this is real simple by the way you just click on the first one click and hold and as you drag down it's going to select all of them or unselect you can do this with the mute button you can do this with the solos records if I select them all and hold the shift button whatever I move this one to the others will automatically follow suit so I'm going to go ahead and move that to where I'd like to have it. That looks pretty good there. Okay, so now let's say I want to have track names. So we'll make this one Guitars. Okay, so one more element that I will always have is Addictive Drums. So I'm going to go ahead and right click in here, Insert from Track Template. We'll get into this at a later date, but you can have audio track templates. These are templates within templates or soft synth track templates. I have an AD2, which stands for Addictive Drums 2 Stereo Template. And if I load this in here, you will see that when it pops up, not only does Addictive Drums pops up, but all of the kit pieces are separately routed to their own tracks as well. So I can actually have access to manipulate each and every aspect of the drums. So for instance, if I was to bring this up, bring in just a simple beat here. You can see each one of these has their own track that could be recorded to and manipulated as well. Stop. I'm gonna go in here. All right, so I'll collapse that. Here's another uh, useful thing. So maybe I'm looking at this track here, and really quickly, I'd like to look at all of my tracks at once. You simply hit the shortcut to the F key, and it collapses them all to within where you can see them. Okay, so now I'd like to set up some color schemes. So if I click on this little box next to uh, the edge here where it says track color if I hover over it. I always like my vocals to be blue. My guitars, especially if they're acoustic, would be brown. My electric guitars I always have as red. And my bass guitar I always have as purple. And that just helps me to when I'm looking, glancing over the project immediately I can kind of know where I'm going. Also, in this area right here, where we have a track icon, if I was to left click on this, I can go to load track icon, and it will bring up all of these different icons that are found within Cakewalk. So I'm gonna go to vocals and double click. And here's a wide variety of things that I could use as my track icon for vocals. Normally I'll usually just select something like a microphone that looks uh, can be easily understood as to what it is. So here we are. I've got a microphone there. Load track icon for guitars. 
Okay. So now I have track icons that are routed to each of those. There are collar coordinates to let me know what I'm looking at visually in a collar uh, format. One thing that would be notable to mention as well is that you can also save plugins and by doing so, for instance, if you use, uh, for instance on vocals, if you always use, in my case I always use this uh, vocal strip. So I'll go ahead and automatically have that on there loaded and ready. On my acoustic guitars, I'll almost always use my EQ. Go ahead and have that loaded on there as well. So I'm going to go ahead and enable each one of these channel strips for their EQs. And on the vocal section here, I'm going to go ahead and put a high pass filter starting at 70, 70 hertz, 71 in this case. Okay, 70 hertz. So now I'm going to hold the control button, click and drag to the next track. Now on my bass, I don't want to start my roll off at uh, 70 hertz. 40 is actually a little bit better for that. Okay. Each one of those is good to go. If I was going to say, okay, I like this, I've got plugins already put in there that I like, I've got EQ moves that I always make already in there as far as, you know, high pass filters. Okay, so now I'd like to set up some color schemes. So if I click on this little box next to uh, the edge here, where it says, or I have an idea. So I'll go up to File, and then I'll go to Save As. This will pop up this screen right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the Save As Type and click Template. Now in the Go To folder, I'm going to click Template Files. So these are all the templates that I've made. As you can see, here's the Pro Startup that I made. Here's one I've made for podcasting. Here's one I've made for uh, beat making. So there's all kinds of different templates. And you can actually delete the ones that are shown on the start screen here if you don't like them. Or simply leave them. But let's call this one Test. Go ahead and save it. Okay. Now, if you start up in that uh, template now, so you'll go to New Project, I'll scroll down to Test, and there it is. Now it's in my template files. When I click on this, immediately it's going to load everything that I've just done. And there it is. Now one thing that's notable to mention is, if I go to... I'm recording a project in this, and I go to save my project after just saving a template. I'll go to save as. You have to make sure that these are set back to their normal and project files. Otherwise, you'll be saving another template over top of the one that you just created. So that could create a problem. Just make sure that after you create a template, that when you go back in to save a project, make sure that this is back set back to normal and this is set back to project files. All right, so that's just a real quick sort of brief introduction on how to create templates of your own. Um, it's the exact same way that I created the Pro Startup template. And there's many things that you can do in here that you can save. For instance, in the Pro Startup template I have over here in the description of each track, um, little tips and tricks on how to mix certain instruments. Um, I also have my Pro Channel set up to where it's already dialed in like I would like to have it. And so yet again, showing how Cakewalk is completely customizable and is set at improving your workflow and getting you into making music more than just dilly-dallying around with setting up projects every time. I hope this has been helpful. If you like it, give it a thumbs up, give it a like, click that bell icon, and each time I 
upload a new video about these, um, you're going to see that automatically. And go ahead and subscribe too as well. I would greatly appreciate that. So in the next video, we're going to dive deeper into some more aspects of Cakewalk, formerly known as Sonar by BandLab.